could, sorry. Uh, on the 4th of July, the neighborhood was a war zone. It literally felt as if we were being bombarded because there were seven neighbors within a one block area that were shooting off massive amounts of large fireworks. And my next door neighbors suffer from PTSD. They were totally besides themselves. I had another neighbor with dogs that were in the basement cowering under furniture. And if you had wanted to have an outdoor event with a family, you could not have done it peacefully at all. Um, now, I didn't have debris falling in my yard, so they were pretty good about the debris. Um, had less this year, actually, than last year. But I think that I'm not either opposed to banning them. But again, how do we enforce that? What if we don't have enforcement on it of some sort that's reliable and strategic, it's going to be very, very difficult to enforce a ban in this town, I think. I'm not sure what the solution is, but it's definitely needs to be addressed. And I can totally sympathize with people who have pets or who suffer from some problem in regards to the noise, um, because it definitely was very noisy in my neighborhoods. Well, Doc is my neighbor. We, we both live out in a quiet neighborhood. And, and quite honestly, I'm hardly aware that fireworks are going off in there where we live. <laughs> I mean, we, we hear a faint echo, you know, and that's about it, isn't it? You know, and, but I understand that people abuse the heck out of it. If, as Barb said, if we could have an ordinance and if we could enforce it so that it happened during the time frame with the sort of fireworks that are permitted, I would be all in favor of it because I think I personally enjoy it. When I was a kid, you know, we traveled to hear fireworks, you know, when I was a kid, you know, and, and I still enjoy it. When I, with, with, but I understand in the neighborhoods, it needs to be controlled, it needs to be respectful, and it needs to only happen with what's approved and during the time frame that it should be done. Now, is there, this is maybe a, just a dumb question, because I certainly don't know the answer. Is there any way to empower like the National Guard or somebody like that to help enforce or to be patrolling or anything like that on a day like the 4th of July? Just no. That would <laughs> that, well, that's what, I, that's what I assumed was the answer, but I had to ask the governor's right. call. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and I understand you don't have the manpower. Yeah. If, if everybody's on it, you can only do so much. Right. So. I, I don't know how, I, how I'm going to vote when it comes down to it. I would like to see it for people to be able to do it properly and correctly on the 4th of July period. I don't know if that's possible. And if it isn't, then they have no one to blame but themselves. If we have to ban it. Dean? I... Uh... In my neighborhood, it, it was absolutely crazy. I had fireworks a week before. We still have them going off occasionally now, just extras. And it's three or four going in high. Um, I'm gonna bring my dog to your house next year. <laughs> I have I'll to put you. him on a sedative. I, I know the neighbors, I gave them their dog one too because it, it, and he's gotten better and I've taken him out by the rifle range it drives him nuts just to get him a little better but around the hospital area there was fireworks it was non-stop 
from probably nine or 10 in the morning until 2.33 in the, in the evening. Um, light sleepers don't sleep. I think there's a safety concern. I know some streets, they were firing off so much, cars couldn't drive through. You couldn't see. There was junk everywhere. I walked the bike trail every morning with my dog and out there along that big stretch into the field over by the campers. They were, they were everywhere. Um, I, I really feel for the soldiers that have PTSD. I don't know how they could handle a day like that. Um, the only thing I would do for them poor people is get a hotel in Des Moines somewhere, some place where fireworks are banned. I know you can't control the 4th of July officers going out and, and it, it's a terrible thing to put you folks through. I know it would be easier to control if we banned it. Because then if you've got people that are firing them off, you know right where they're at. Um, it used to be fun. I love fireworks. We would wait for the city. The city can still have a great fireworks. This year, the city's was overshadowed by all the other people <laughs> blowing them off. It wasn't fun at all for anybody, I don't think. I know the city's is great and it's a set time nine at night to 11 or whatever, and then you're done. I'd like to go back to that. And, you know, my block was so smoky, you didn't want to even be outside. Um, and I know a lot of people were upset. I got a lot of calls. They had their kids in from out of town. They wanted to have a picnic out in the backyard. They said it was just nuts. They, they finally, actually, a couple of them left and went to Adel, <laughs> where, where their kids live. Um, I, I just think it's gotten out of hand. I enjoy fireworks that the city's doing them. But I, I think, you know, safety wise, it's getting crazy out there. So that's my thoughts and concerns. Um, I'm sure there had to have been a bunch of people that were hurt. But uh, property damage, I know some cars got hoods burnt. Um, let's, I would hope to tone it back some and let people enjoy it for a couple hours at night um, or maybe change our firecracker hour to nine to 11 only. Something just to slow it down where other people can be out and enjoy living around here on the 4th of July and every day around the 4th of July. That's my concern. Steve? Uh, so, going back to a couple previous comments, Bill, you were talking about from 9 to 2 a.m. And there being so much, was that on the 4th of July that you were talking about? On the 4th of July, it was 9 a.m. to 2.30. Okay, I know I was in the morning. Still in the morning. Yes. It was just early. And every day before that for a week and every day after for a couple of weeks. The medication was still. Finishing up their extras and uh, it just seems like it ramps up. It you know it starts kind of slow about a, ten days or so before the Fourth of July. Then mm -hmm. as the days get closer, it just kind of ramps up. You bet. Okay. Anything else, Dean? That's all I have. Vicky. Well, the first thing I think I'll say is I think we're getting away from our July Fourth celebration. I think it used to be where families could get together. We get to have picnics. You could be outside and enjoy. Um, you'd have a few fireworks or whatever, and then you enjoy the city's fireworks. Now you can't plan. I've had my neighbors say that they would hate to see July 4th come. It's nerve wracking. It is just a complete, it's a racket from 
and it's it doesn't you don't have any time in between it's just constant and uh, it's in the streets yes i've seen them on 18th street block it fire them off right in the streets i mean that's our city streets we, they shouldn't even be out there they have no respect for anybody's yards they don't care which direction they go off or where they land i mean we've been really lucky that nobody's Roofs have got on fire or any <coughs> grass fires. Um, I think that's where we come into safety. Kids are running around and people are lighting them off. You know, they just don't care. That, that scares me on that. Um, I guess what everybody said, I am in total agreement with. It, it, and the thing is, it's so smoky the next day that anybody that has any type of breathing problems, you can't go outside. Uh, enforcement, I don't know how we enforce it. We can have an ordinance, nobody cares. And that's just not with fireworks. That has to do with other things with their city too. We can have enforced stuff and they just don't abide by it. Um, I don't know. I feel sorry for the police officers because I've watched where they went by and they run inside and they wait a while and they come right back out. There's no way with that much going on that you can enforce it with, with your size of, <laughs> I mean, it just can't happen. It's just too much. So that alone, and I don't know what you would do if you had a fire. I think they would light them off of fire trucks right being there. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is. They don't care. They, um, you can have cars out in the street. They don't care where they're at. Kids are playing when they're lighting them off. It just scares me. I just, uh, and it's not right. People shouldn't have to be locked in their homes <clears throat> on a holiday. We should be outside celebrating our 4th of July. I, think it's, I don't know how you can enforce it, but I think you know, we've we've given the the public the opportunity to do this responsibly, and unfortunately, we've got a group of people that have not handled it responsibly. It'd be different if we just immediately after that law was passed, we said we're banning fireworks right from the get go. But we gave them a couple years to do it right, and in my opinion, they have just totally disregarded what we we put down as an ordinance so it's not like we didn't give them a chance to fly right we did give them a chance to fly right and i'm i'm all for banning it i still come back to we've got to come up with some creative ways to enforce it uh, that's where i'm at we've got to come up with some strategies to enforce it but i i agree i i've, I've heard enough <laughs> I'm all for banning them. So I just want, Mayor, do you have any points that you want? Just to, to reiterate, the, uh, the number one concern that I've heard each and every year, including this year and, 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 and every year, was that it, it takes so much away from the day that people, as, as I think every council person spoke to, they can't celebrate the day. Um, some of the, you know, some elder of the people talk to me and, you know, they, they used to like to go to the park and, or, or sit, out, sit out in their backyard maybe and watch the community fireworks. They don't feel safe doing that anymore. Um, that's the number one concern that it just takes away so much today and perhaps ruins the day for so many people. It, it has occurred to me, you know, we've kind of forced the fireworks into the neighborhoods by banning public spaces for shooting on fire. And it has occurred to me that if we designated specific legal spots, you know, the soccer complex or the other soccer complex, and made those areas that were legal to shoot off take it out of the neighborhoods, maybe that would alleviate some pressure on the neighborhoods. But then again, it's like, we don't want the liability of that. But we've forced it into the neighborhoods by the regulations that we have. And 
that's really important. And the size of the fireworks are huge. I mean, they're not just shooting off little model rockets, they're shooting off mega fireworks. I, I have absolutely no confidence that the people that are shooting them off in the neighborhoods would abide by. I don't either. I don't think they would even think about that. I think they would just keep on firing them off in the neighborhood. And I think that's one problem too. They are so big yeah. that they're dangerous. So I did, I thought it would just be good to review yeah. what our uh, current rules are um, just to help set the stage a little bit more. Um, so we only allow them on the 4th uh, from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, and only on the owner's property or some property that they have uh, permission for. Uh, as Ms. Walling said, you can't set them off in public places, parks, cemeteries, which includes the streets, and that was mentioned a couple of times, uh, or sidewalks. Uh, you know, we have that you have to pick up after them. Uh, can't set them off around the hospital or senior care facility. Uh, and then the, one of the ones that we changed this year was that you can't send them off on arterial commercial or central business district. And again, that was because there's several issues during the community fireworks display of people setting off fireworks in those really dense areas where people are trying to watch. I think there's a couple of vehicles damaged, things like that. Um, and then you, can't, you have to be 18 or over. Um, you can't be drunk or high, uh, but we do allow, and we just did it at the last council meeting for homecoming you can get a permit for a fireworks display. Uh, then we did uh, kind of change up our fine structure to where you can uh, find the property owner, the person in control of the property. So. And nobody abided by it. Well, I think some, some do. Some do. Um, Too many do. But, you know, one of the biggest, one of the ones that we had the most comments on was um, that there is just too much going on on the 4th of July between noise and uh, not being able to be outside. So um, I don't know, do you, I would say this is a time that we kind of start picking off some of these top issues that a lot of mayor and council made comments on and really just focus on one issue at a time um, and talk about those. Does that sound okay? I think that's a good idea, but I think it's a total waste of time. Okay. The public is not going to change just by enacting a little bit of this or a little bit of that. I think, I think the only thing that's going to work about is if we ban them for a year or two and enforce it to the best of our ability and then see if there, there's a way that maybe that will wake people up and we might be able to do something different two or three years down the road. This is a, this is a question and I, I'm totally serious. I'm not, I'm not asking some, this, I'm serious about this question. Do you have the power to deputize any citizens to help with the enforcement? Not really. I mean, we could have uh, the persons that be able to do that. I mean, um, I think by our code, you know, the police department can cite municipal infractions. Um, I believe, you know, um, it gives the power to the compliance officer, to the building inspector, and probably to Sven to do that. Uh, other than that, I think it would be difficult to, to do something like that. Uh, but those people would have the power to to cite. Um, and I'll just talk, I'll, if we're going to talk about enforcement just a little bit. So I think some of the things, um, you know, generally we enact laws and we hope that people uh, comply with those laws. That's the biggest way that uh, laws work is compliance. 
just from citizens because they want to do the right thing. Um, <clears throat> I know uh, we have we've worked to inform the public um, by uh, doing Facebook announcements and by our our city websites, um, handing out uh, flyers at uh, fireworks tents, posting them at fireworks tents. This year we posted um, signage on those business areas and in the parks. Um, and I guess one of the positive things is from what I've heard is that uh, some of that seemed to help. Yeah. Definitely in the parks. I mean, we still had some usage, but um, talking to John Anderson at the parks department, he said it usually takes them four to five hours to clean up the park, it was down to an hour this year, which yeah. means there was less usage to me, I'm hoping. Um, along that business corridor, um, I think we had less complaints in that area too. Um, so whatever we do, I think that's going to be a big part of it is some signage uh, or something and, and just ramping up our um, notification to the public of what those ordinances are and where they can. Um, because each year I'm, I'm still surprised when I see comments on Facebook, but like some people still don't know what the ordinance are, even after everything we do. Um, so I think those, those signages really work, um, or I'm hoping it does, the, whether it be the electronic ones or billboards or yard signs that we put up. Um, that's something that we need to do going forward either way, I think next year. Um, another thing that we need to do as a police department is ramp up our enforcement. And we're gonna have to be a little stealthier about how we do it. Um, we're gonna have to put some other people on the ground. Um, officers out there i know we're shorthanded but um if this is something the city wants us to do um and it's important to the, the council and to the city then we're going to step up our enforcement um and we're going to look at ways to do that whether that be foot patrol whether that be bike patrol whether that be using unmarked cars and um, and just generally putting more officers on duty especially those days leading up to fourth of july where we seem to have the bulk of our complaints um, we're going to do that. Um, we're going to go out and we're going to make personal contact with people uh, to try to help curb this problem. Not to say that that's going to be any better next year, no matter what we do, but hopefully, you know, in the years to come, that will decrease our problems. I think one thing on enforcement, if, if we really want to put an in or improve the situation, is not to give them a warning. Yes. Is, here, here's your. Here's your fine. Pay it within a week or whatever. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree, and that's that's gonna that was uh, gonna be my instructions to the officers. Um, that's that that's the thing too. If uh, municipal infractions, um, it's a little easier to uh, find a person uh, guilty of that than there is like even a a, a traffic citation or any other arrestable offense. So. The burden of proof is a little bit less. See them lighting off a firework to Well, what I think the ordinance says, I mean, that's it's great if we can. Um, but no, if we can determine that fireworks are being used on a property, and look, what we passed last year was if, if kind of if they're knowingly allowing that to happen, the property owner or the uh, person in charge of that property, then uh, the code lets allows us to cite. So, so I the think smoke is in that yard. You can do it. Yeah, and I think that's what we need to uh, work on with our officers is uh, kind of running through some scenarios and kind of breaking it down with them so uh, we get better enforcement from our officers. I know they were out there chasing their tails, have been for a couple of years, but I think we still uh, there's room for improvement uh, on that. Um, so just as, as far as signage, signage, I think that we talked about, you know, it's going to cost some. So this is going to cost us some money either way, um, whether that be from uh, overtime for officers, um, but also signage. And I'm thinking we continue to do signage in that business area in the parks. Um, we place uh, some large, like, you know, election type signs. You know, four by eight signs uh, in the areas where the tents 
will be or sales are being happening or maybe even on the entry points to town to let people know as they're driving in um this are our expectations and then again we talked about the hospitals in those areas and maybe we uh partnered with those people and and make some type of signage to place out in front of their uh locations to let people know that they're passing by what the ordinance is and what our expectations and um, hopefully kind of draw on them to uh, have a little empathy and understanding of the people that are in the hospital or in those care centers and how that can affect them too. However, if the consensus of the council is to ban yes. fireworks, yes, flat out ban it, you know, your, your signs are gonna be pretty simple. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. That will be, but I think it's still going to be important to yeah. try to hit everybody in every kind of media that we can to yeah. try to get their attention. And Eric, I think you're right, but I'll make this comment. If this council wants to ban or whatever we decide to do, I think this council can find a little bit of money to help you. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. The only issue we haven't addressed is the location of the places that sell the fireworks unless we reach some sort of consensus on that which i i don't think we have well, so i think it only really came up once but it was a recommendation from the fireworks committee this spring um, but we did not take action on that because it was so close to the time and uh, vendors already had their sites staked out and contracts and things like that. So um, if that's something that should be included, I think we we're discussing to uh, move that to heavy industrial areas. Such as, explain. Yeah. Maps there, I can't really small. No, that's I didn't realize that was there. That's a little painting for me. So heavy industrial is the dark blue. Light industrial is the light blue. Now is your light blue, you mean the turquoise? Yeah. So basically in these areas, mainly, yeah, so there's like this here. Yeah. And there are some right here. Right. But we're talking about the difference between light and heavy industrial. So is, is I, that heavy industrial? Is that personal and out in that area? This is the Brownfield area. Okay. And Perkins Park, actually. Um, this is right along Diagonal Road. And 141. And then this is uh, the foundries property up over all the way to Perkins Park along, like on the west side of First Street. And then, so this, I, for the most part, is all city property. This parcel right there is Landis co-ops. Um, and then there's a few different owners, but a lot of this is Carl Steppenholtz. Um, and then he did just sell this property right here. But I mean, other than this, all of that property would mostly be kind of on the outskirts of town with this being really the only viable area that somebody would probably even want to set up a tent. What's, what's the green? 
That is the central heavy industrial. Yeah. But then this turquoise is light industrial, which would open up a few other areas for sales if that was the case, except for downtown and a little over here. Um, but you could also solve that by it has to be on heavy and light industrial and X number of feet from another building that would push it out of that uh, more dense area. Assuming that works with state code. Uh, right here. Yeah. Yep. Close so your microphone, please. Oh. <laughs> that would be this area right here would be right along Frog Creek, right next to Patty Park. That's that's basically like uh, the old Mark C area. And Iowa code says we have to provide a place within city limits. Correct. We have to, there's no uh, option. Yep, we can't outright ban it, but we can dictate where sales can happen. And is this something we're gonna decide on at our next meeting then? No, so um, from this, uh, we'll kind of have our to-dos and takeaways to work with Dewey to write a new ordinance. Um, and that will take a little bit. So um, the plan would be to at our next meeting on Tuesday the 7th, more so just kind of give a recap of this meeting and the outcomes that we're working on. And then uh, if we have a draft ordinance for the meeting on September 20th, we could have a first reading at that meeting. Within those areas can we specify specific parcels not that i would say no but what we could do is work with certain setback requirements from other buildings or structures or property lines things like that that they would be able to set up a tent on well can you bring it back to the council some like maybe exhibit A, B, C. Because just looking at this map, I mean, we can't tell. Oh, you could probably put a for sale, have the tent out there. I'm not sure. Out where? Parcels. I don't. I don't know who owns what, or if they have the okay, or if they want a tent out there. Yeah, and then they have to go by the owner too. And yeah. He wants all, it. Yeah. So all of that. We can't just between... sit here and look at. It and say, oh, that looks like a good place. <laughs> Right. So, so I mean, the owner. I'll beat you with no, the all. owner would have to allow somebody to set up on their property. Okay. We're just this conversation would be more towards where do we want to direct that activity? Well, I definitely feel that we need to pursue that. It's just too doggone convenient to walk out of high B and fly in fire. Okay. I don't think changing the location is gonna, gonna stop many people if they really want to. Right. But I agree with you, Bob. It's too handy, you know, to walk out of the local grocery store seven times a month than right there they are. You're not going to cut down the sales if people really want to buy them, but you are going to make it a destination. Yeah, yeah, the impulse buyer. Right. So, does anybody have thoughts or comments on our discussion about heavy industrial, light industrial, and trying to get it out of 
central business district in some of those neighborhood areas or um, is it just heavy industrial heavy and light i'd like to get some thoughts on on that well either either of those as long as we can do the setbacks and keep it out of downtown and the central corridor i think either designation would work because that's pushing it out what happens Fanny, if if we doesn't designate it towards heavy industrial and, and none of the property or business owners in that area want to permit fireworks on their property do we have to come, we have to come up with another area because no, we have that to sales or all we would dictate is the zoning it's allowed in and if a property owner doesn't want a fireworks tent they don't have to it's their option yep but they typically get paid for allowing the tent yep they pay And again, there are some parcels that have some neighborhoods close. Um, so it'd probably be something that we'd still have some sort of setback requirement for some of those parcels, regardless. So it's more, you know, just heavy industrial would really mostly push it to that area along Diagonal Road light industrial would open it up a little bit more to a couple other areas I favor heavy industrial so yeah i agree yeah i, agree. I, I support being really restrictive okay <laughs> you know and, and 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 if we don't want to go that way then i would support that we just have to make a wholehearted attempt to get the thing under control but we just need to tell them Well, even if we ban them, they still can sell. They can still bring their tent. We just have to fire them all off town. <laughs> okay. Well, I think. Liz and Dewey, do you feel comfortable with the direction and coming up with an ordinance? Okay. So we'll be working on draft ordinance, um, provide an update, kind of an overview at the next meeting of here's the changes and probably more of a bullet point fashion, and then come up with the hard language, hopefully for the September 20th meeting. Somebody else have any, anything to add on the issues we've identified before we end this meeting? Yep, that's what the ordinance would read. Okay. Yep. And again, uh, Open forum is on September 7th, as well as uh, September 20th, um, but also all the phone numbers and emails are on the city website. So if somebody wants to get a hold of anybody, uh, they can certainly do that. And, and I always like to include, it was a legislature and their infinite wisdom that, that put this law into effect. If anybody wants to contact any legislator feel please feel free to do that they're the ones that you know put this in place for all, all of the cities to deal with and our local representatives would be uh jake chapman as well as ray bubba Sorensen. and of course i don't think it's any secret that jake you know uh, really really pushed to to make this happen yep and i think that's an excellent point. I think the state made 
this allowable and then put it on the cities. Um, so in, unless the state would do something different, we're just gonna continue to have issues. I mean, it's gonna be on the shoulders of the police department to enforce um, and that'll come at a cost. So. And the state's gonna be first for that one. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a good joke, Bob. <laughs> And I mean, and to get into a deeper issue on enforcement, I know over the 4th of July this year, I believe we were down three officers. So between open spots, people at the academy, things like that. So, and it's kind of a, there's, there's turnover at the police department. So it's it's not just necessarily a go out and write a bunch of tickets because there's a workload regularly on top of this so it does put a strain on law enforcement uh, to even have fireworks be an issue at the state level so um, i think we will have to financially put something towards uh, you know extra officers in that time frame uh, signage, education, all those sorts of things. So how are we on staff right now? We're, uh, we have two openings right now. And um, Sergeant Archer and I have been working to try to fill those positions. So we have Jordan Berry just uh, graduated the academy last Friday. Last Friday. <laughs> Lose <laughs> track of time. But last Friday, um, the out on the street on Monday. So but we're, we're looking, we're getting close, closer to uh, filling those positions right oh, now. Oh, it's Academy. 16 weeks. So generally you're looking at, you know, whatever that hiring time, you know, three to four months of a process to get, a, select a candidate, 16 weeks of Academy plus probably three weeks of um, field training. So it, it's definitely a process. So what we're working on now is just um, is just keeping that uh, application process open. And if applicants come in, we're gonna you know work through those, uh, work through testing and interviewing. So if we do, so we can fill our current spots, and then if we have spots coming over in the future, that uh, we can maybe pull from those applicants and just go from there. Um, and it's not just it's not a common. It, it's not just our department, it's every department. As you can see, the uh, Department of Public Safety um, right now is doing a big advertisement push for certified officers. So they're looking and doing a, um, a shortened class um, for those certified officers. Before it didn't matter where you came from, what experience you had, you had to go through the full DPS Academy. Um, and now with certified officers are doing a shortened Academy so they can help fill positions too. So. It's it's a it's across the county, across the state, across the country. It's it's just being getting more difficult to find candidates. Yeah. We appreciate your efforts. If there's no other discussion, we stand ad ad adjourned at uh, 1053 a.m. Thank you. I think we've got some good discussion and identified some issues we do need to look at. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations.